Welcome back to Sunrise Meditations on the beautiful and serene Ender's Island. Today is Monday of the second week in Lent, and I'm your host, Deacon Francis Fallier. Alexio Divina, our divine reading, is from the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verses 4 through 10. Let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who have taught us to chasten our bodies for the healing of our souls, enable us, we pray, to abstain from all sins and strengthen our hearts to carry out your loving commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. And now let us listen and attend to our scripture passage. A reading from the book of Daniel. Lord, great and awesome God, you who keep your merciful covenant toward those who love you and observe your commandments, we have sinned, been wicked and done evil. We have rebelled and departed from your commandments and your laws. We have not obeyed your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, our fathers, and all the people of the land. Justice, O Lord, is on your side. We are shamefaced even to this day. We, the men of Judah, the residents of Jerusalem, and all Israel, near and far, in all the countries to which you have scattered them because of their treachery toward you. O Lord, we are shamefaced, like our kings, our princes, and our fathers, for having sinned against you. But yours, O Lord, our God, are compassion and forgiveness. Yet we rebelled against you and paid No heed to your command, O Lord, our God, to live by the law you gave us through your servants, the prophets. The word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. The theme of the readings today is repentance and a prayer for God's mercy and compassion. It is extraordinary that for over 1,000 years, this prayer from the book of Daniel has been read in today's Lenten Mass. It's an excellent penitential prayer, a national act of contrition, describing God's perfection and man's imperfection. (laughs) A little aside, it's a good national act of contrition for us here in the United States. It is a prayer of sorrow and repentance for the many ways in which we have failed to listen to God and his messengers. It's a prayer which contains humility and worship and confession and petition. As the prayer says, we have sinned, we have rebelled, We have not obeyed, and we are shamefaced. But yours, O Lord our God, are compassion and forgiveness. So much of the time, these are not the words we hear from people's lips or our own. As soon as something goes wrong, we immediately start looking around for someone to blame. hmm? Our media spend a great deal of time and space pointing fingers at others as the source of our troubles. We call it scapegoating, right? It is something we all indulge in to a greater or lesser extent. Just listen to a few people gossiping together over a pint of beer or a cup of coffee. Today's reading calls on us to point the finger in the opposite direction, which means at ourselves, and to be fully aware of how we have failed 
how we have sinned and how we have rebelled as an individual. And so I should go back and say how I have failed, how I have sinned, how I have rebelled, and how I much need to be shameful for all of this. A good way to measure our sensitivity in this area might be to look at our confessions. As Catholics, we go into the confessional and confess our sins before the priest who is in the person of Christ. But those who aren't Catholic, they can confess their sins to others as well, trying to reconcile ourselves with the wrongs that we've done that affect everyone around us. When we do go to confession, what do we confess to? Do we just throw out a few platitudinal admissions, <laughs> telling lies, distractions at prayers, losing our temper? Or do we go deep into the areas where we truly fail in our relationship with, with God, with Jesus, and with others and with ourselves? Perhaps we do not go to confession at all because we can't think of anything to say. At the same time, most of us would be very slow to reveal to others our inner thoughts and feelings because to tell the truth, we're quite ashamed of them. Paradoxically, it's often the saint, the one who is closest to God, who is most aware of his or her sinfulness and his or her need for healing. Lent, my brothers and sisters, is a great time for conversion, metanoia, a daily conversion, for renewal and for change. It's a time for openness, especially with ourselves. That cannot even begin to take place until we are aware of and acknowledge in ourselves the areas where that change must take place. And especially in our wrongdoings, our sinfulness. For not one is without sin, except the one who went to the cross. And having recognized our faults and the harm they have done to others and to ourselves in our relationships with God, we beg his mercy and compassion. And we know for certain that God's mercy and compassion are guaranteed once we open ourselves to him. Something to ponder. As usual, after our closing prayer, we read this scripture passage again. Contemplate its message and concentrate on a thought that the Holy Spirit places in your heart either through a verse or even just a small word from this scripture passage, then ask the Holy Spirit to show you how it pertains to you and, more importantly, how you may spiritually grow in imitation of Jesus, fulfilling the will of our Heavenly Father. Let us complete a divine reading now with a closing prayer, and let us pray. Having contemplated your divine word and embraced the sacred truths you teach us, Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy. For even now as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through our Lord Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be upon you always and in all ways. And may his generous blessings fill your day with joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, if you enjoy listening to these daily meditations, please click the like button. And if you haven't already done so, please click on that subscribe button and the bell icon and help support our channel. And share these links with others. Pass them along to your friends and relatives as well. 
God bless you all. Have a great day. And join us again tomorrow for another Lexio Divina, a divine reading of God's sacred word. Pax et bonum omnibus. Peace and blessings to all.